greetings subscribers and would be future subscribers, hint hint, um, <laughs> to me, the new guy for uh, conquering the world as the Incas. Um, I started off in a bad, uh, bad way there by starting off with the only Um Can't help it, hold on a second. Right. Let's see what the plans of uh, plan of action is. Uh, I can't help it. It just my speech feels really, really sort of too purposeful. I'd imagine too purposeful. Uh, uh, there's not enough bit of oligonaring in it. And, uh, I imagine that's been the case for a lot of verbalizations. So I'm thinking for this episode to, you know, bite the bullet and take on Spain. Just, just you know, because the French aren't going to do anything about it. They're allied. And I suppose it will give me a nice sort of step to France. Meanwhile, I'll let the uh, the Mongols... Uh, I was uh, just call them the Mongolese there for a second. Uh, <laughs> who was they? Could be. Could be what I call them. Uh, I'm going to let them battle it out with the Lakota. Uh, they're not going to battle... No, that's no, that's no good. They've got no armies there to battle them there. Hopefully, maybe if the Lakota sort of attack them there and they can sort of fight amongst themselves. Whether the French can look look menacing. They're doing quite well actually, they've got most of Europe, but uh, Europe's always a tricky one to go for in terms of continents because you have to take so many useless ones. Considering that when you take a capital province, it then does nothing for you. You've got, uh, you've got the British Isles, Holland, Germany, uh, Greece, uh, Anatolia, which is considered in Europe, uh, Italy, Spain, and France. Uh, which goes to show just how much of a, a uh, Eurocentric uh, game this is. That by the time you conquer Europe, all of Europe, half your territory is just useless. Oh, and Russia as well, you need to take out the Russians. So that's uh, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight territories, a massive eight territories uh, that are useless to you, and three, four, five that aren't. Six. That's a terrible ratio. Why would you start as a European? Where is my humble, uh, humble starting place? I only have to sort of uh, take sort of three, uh, three here to get a continent, and they're all useful to a degree. Anyway, you love chit chat, uh, blah blah blah. It's not not chit chat really, because uh, nobody's nobody's chitting back to me. Um, so I'll knock them down to a six, just to, you know. And I don't really want to waste any cards on these people because they're going to be easy. But I do have a spare science Eureka, so I may as well. Hmm. And uh, once again, I'll let you uh, uh, let you watch the watch the watch the loading screen, so we can do this in real time. So you get a real, a real sort of sense that we're all in this together. Not be able to watch this at least you know 24 hours after after I'm doing this. That's the best. That's the best enemy card uh, bonus card they've got. Food economic boom. Five percent boost on production for this resource in one battle. It's not. It's not worth it, is it? So here's me, and look how look how smart the my enlightenment troops are. The, the sprites, the uh, the game the game designers, the game artists really did uh, did themselves proud with this game. I think it's a it's a beautiful game to look at. It's just a shame that <laughs> nobody has any time to really look at it if they're playing the game properly, which is what the um, Primer strategy, no, not primer. The strategy game, the strategy guide that I read for this, uh, I got it, and it's been the most useful sort of, the most entertaining read. Then again, this is coming from a guy that likes to enjoy reading, um, likes to read game manuals for fun, or used to when I was when I was younger, because uh, I believe I was younger once, many years ago. Hmm. 
Mm. So anyway, um, I believe I was talking about something. Mm. Oh, it'll, it'll come to me. There's a mine over there. Maybe a university at some point, but don't don't rush yourself. I can't remember, I was talking about it quite energetically, I seem to recall. And that's a weird thing about my memory, my memory. I can recall what I was talking about. I was talking about it <laughs> energetically. But uh, what it was, I was so enthused about. Uh, beyond me. Uh, so, I'm drinking a. Uh, I'll wait for my gummy to develop. Um, I have a sip of tea. Ooh, quite nice stuff as well. I'm uh, instead of yes, instead of drinking something uh, vaguely alcoholic, uh, <laughs> which seems to happen. But you see, what you out in these videos, and I've got a lot of wood to uh, burn, <laughs> so to speak. Um, Reorder that so you go for the science first because that makes all the rest of them cheaper. Hurrah! I'm uh, drinking a cup of yeah, instead of drinking something alcoholic, uh, I'm drinking after dinner tea uh, made up of organic fennel, chic chicory, and uh, cardamom tea. Deliciously aromatic and calming. I've seen the incredible uh, natural benefits of organic herbs. So when I go for tea, although I do often. Uh, more often than not, go for you know your standard tea in a tea bag kind of everyday tea. Uh, for this occasion, I've, I've, I've pushed the boat out a little and gone for after dinner tea. And being as it's twenty past ten at the time of recording, um, I think that's that's a perfectly appropriate time. Hmm. Now the AI does like to attack, so I may just build a couple of defensive, sort of, get some things set up, just in case. But by the looks of it, I've got, I've got North Africa to myself, again. Happened this, this happened when I was taking on the, uh, taking on the Romans, if you recall. And then now I believe I'm in Morocco as opposed, to, Morocco and Algeria as opposed to Libya. Oh, this is all this is all, all sorts of guessing. I can't actually see much of the world because the cat's going awfully slowly. Would you look at this just as a sort of a monster rate of technological advancement? So I say an economic advancement. In fact, all kind of advancements, it's all pretty wonderful. So I bolster up my defences there. Um, Research, oh, I can't afford to can't afford to research democracy. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, folks. Um, I know you were looking forward to it and all, but uh, there's just not enough knowledge. Blame the scholars. Take them out and send them into the fields. <laughs> oh, killed a scout! Hurrah! I never even noticed. I can build a third city, so you go over there and build said third city. Now let's see what research needs to be done. And what, correction, what research needs to be done and that I can afford. And I go again with the cheap wood. It's under under 100. Well, not anymore. It was under 100. I imagine that's because I'm swing, swimming in wealth. being Inca. Oh, I've discovered, rail I've discovered railroads apparently. That's Commerce 3. So that's one of the nice things about this game. It's sort of 
Um, oh, that was it. I was talking about talking about the graphics. Isn't that funny? I remember now. I was just saying how beautiful the game looks, particularly when you get to the Enlightenment age, because they've evidently done a lot of work. They put a lot of effort into making the units look, you know, Napoleonic, the kind of era rather, rather, era rather than as the man. Um, even for countries that wouldn't, you know, didn't exist at the time, like the Incans. So they've had to sort of go and sort of guess. And um, done really quite a good job of like, what if the Incans had been around? And of course, it's a question that every sort of what if type of historian has asked. And I was like, what, what if the Incans had survived into the uh, 20th century? Oh, I don't know. And it's, uh, <laughs> But as you say, if you look at these sorts of units here, they look va vaguely sort of um, like, like Napoleonic, but they've got a little bit of Mesoamerican about them as well. And it's the same for the Aztecs. And of course, the unique units that I get, the uh, unique unit, they've actually included it, even though it didn't exist historically. To say, being as the Incas were so good at uh, architecture, and they were, I used to build great big... Uh, huge stone uh, stone cities without cement, so they were sort of measured. Measured the stones were sort of made to measure and slotted together like in a jigsaw puzzle. And hold on a second, that looks like an army. We'll be right back. I'm now ahead of the score again. Right, it's not going to be the common uh, AI error of just <laughs> arriving in sort of ones and twos and then wondering why all the units die. So I will do an uncommon, uh, common human error in which I don't pull my uh, cavalry back, my sorry, my infantry back, and they get massacred by um, horsemen. So we'll fight the good fight and try to get that supply wagon from, you know, over there. And you can all go back to work and you need to build a lumber mill because I believe that's what got destroyed. And just to be sure, a couple more, a couple more stockades. Got it? Good. Right. I need three merchants, four merchants, and three caravans. And I was going to start, <laughs> for some reason I was going to start singing Caravan of Loving, but thankfully for the, sort of the YouTube audience, I managed to, I managed to contain myself at the last moment. If nothing else, just so I can show it off. Because he's not in the industrial age. I wonder him, it's Queen Isabella. Um, a a favourite of uh, games to depict. Uh, last of the Trastamaras, I believe. The Trastamara dynasty of Spain. Uh, of, of Castile. And. Um, Oh, yeah, was a religious fanatic, as you know, we find out when you play uh, Civilization 4. And also, if you, if you read history books as well, uh, key year there is uh, 1492, uh, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue and uh, Zibola expelled the Castilian Jew, which uh, it's a, also fits quite nicely into a rhyme, and has the other benefit, benefits of being historically accurate. He also finished off conquering Granada. So, you know, they managed to source out 
finish off the, the, the Reconquista and then after kicking out the Muslims managed to sort of kick out the Jews as well because why not, man, I'll go for it I'll go, go, go for it, the double whammy hey, hey look where's he off to? Why, what does he know that I don't? huh, that's one well, they made the mistake again of sort of funneling the troops in bit by bit. Ah, Spanish heavy infantry, tercios. Now I need to, uh, I've gone to the industrial age now. Uh, so everything's gone vaguely First World War on us. Well, not, not just vaguely First World War, it's almost entirely First World War. Damn spies. Uh, Tercios are the uh, Spanish uh, unique, unique units. Not very good when they're an age behind. I'm going to go for capitalism now because why not? So that's sort of upgrading all the units. I'm now going to focus on developing my oil reserves. You've noticed it, this new resource is just sort of propped up, got propped up just in the same way that if you're paying attention in the beginning, I think. Iron and knowledge aren't available in the ancient age in much the same way. Um, oil isn't available until the industrial age. So I'll build up these uh, oil wells to get the um, get the oil, and this allows us to build tanks and airplanes. Needed for tanks, airplanes, and ships. a vast landmass, I'm not entirely sure what to do with it. Apart from colonising. Uh... What, are you telling me you're idle now? Oh, that's useful. Okay, what else can I research? Nothing much. So there we go, that's a sort of vaguely vaguely modern army. I don't know where to build my barracks and sort of stables. I don't know where the fr you could consider the front line to be. I think if I built a city up here, I'd miss out on that corner over there. Yeah, I might build it. Yeah, I might build a city up in this top corner. Uh, what are you for? Yeah. I want that, and then a fortress. This probably isn't going to get built actually. Now I think about it, if they've got a load of ships. Okay, one's a load of wood. Don't worry. Don't uh, don't ask any questions. some more citizens there. Oh, and need more caravans. I also need two more merchants. This is what, uh, what build the economy usually entails. Uh, that's wealth taken care of. Metal. I just need more citizens in Kusibamba. Probably something similar. Uh, perhaps actually just more, yeah, more citizens in Machu Picchu. Uh, 
uh, coal and uranium. So when you get to industrial age, not only do you get new basic resources, you also get new um, rare resources. Coal, very good. Reduces all timber costs by 25%. Unfortunately, by the time you usually get to the industrial age, nobody really cares about timber. Apart from me, I'm going through it like nobody's business. Okay, so I've reached the uh, metal metal cap, timber it's on its way, so it's food, oil, I'll be able to do something about that when I get to ele electronics. And what I'll be able to do is refine it, build a refinery, that counts as like a granary, but for the more general wise, um, general, general wise, nation wise. <laughs> Um, oil production as opposed to any production in one given city. So I build a few of those and I'm pretty sure that will do all that nicely. And now that that's built I can get rid of these two here because I don't want units coming out over there and being far away from the action. Hmm, little fort over there just to be uh, awkward. That's impressive. It's impressive. 17 minutes in and I'm already at the uh, far end of the tech train. Almost finished it. Uh, with photography and film. Uh, researching hydroelectricity. engage in the uh, least fun of all the combats in uh, Rise of Nations, naval combat. Naval combat, where um, infinite Q is king. I mean, you wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't expect this battle to be particularly uh, uh, balanced. I mean, look at it, it's got all sort of metal holes, for instance. New happen. I think my treadmills. Oh. Boom. Other shots. Oh, you'll notice that uh, they're, they're travelling around in those sort of like those wooden galleon things. When I get uh, when I when I finally cross the ocean, after having used all my population camp on a navy I don't really need. They look vaguely very modern, you know, the type, type of sort of transports that look, you know, World, World War II ish. And this is why I, this, this is why I don't mind industrial age combat, especially when I'm in the industrial age and the other fella isn't, because dreadnoughts know how to bombard. They like merge the bomb catch line and the uh, battleship line, so they end up with. Uh, ships that actually aren't too bad at... What do you think you're doing? I'm 
That man knows how to take his artillery shells. See what I mean? It looks like uh, it looks like it looks like transport. Now, can you reach? Yes, you can. You can reach the actual city itself. Flamethrowers, you can get them in industrial age, they're pretty good because they automatically go and garrison any building that they attack. Useful for her cities firing on you. It's sort of World War One technology going against Napoleonic technology, and it's far too evenly balanced. Look at it. <laughs> Those hussars are making a mockery of my, my infantry. dark and causing some trouble with it. So I'm going to cause them some trouble. So I put all my light ships up ahead because they're quite cheap, although the sailors on them aren't. Uh, <laughs> every life counts in the uh, every life counts in the Incan army. So I want you to fire in there, you to fire on there, and that'll sort out the little sort of Fifth column effect probably have going on. Well, you're unable to, to attack the target now, but wait until you get closer. You've got 40 oil for that. So, research existentialism, uh, supercomputers, tree reserves, income tax. <laughs> Actually, there's nothing about income tax. A good way to pay for the Napoleonic Wars. Of course, the, the measure it was brought into uh, deeply unpopular when it was first brought in. And that was why it was brought in. There's a, there's a temporary war sign measure. I realised I could get away with it. Not well, there's anything wrong with income tax. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, if, pro if properly set up, it's a very fair and uh, very fair system. Nice and progressive. Unless you set uh, capital gains tax to I don't know, fifteen <laughs> percent. Ooh, that's a little. Uh... Well, I said, oh, well, I know it's a. It so really, doesn't really have its place in a let's play country, but really, it's sort of, you got to tax people sort of, that earn their money by just sitting on more money, less than sort of people who work, work for a living. Anyway, back to the game. Um, yeah, these people, these, these sort of industrial age people, who really know how to sort out 
components that are in the age below. While under fire from a fort, Chris. Some people to go over, so it's whimsical to go across cross country just, just to take cut over. And since this coastline is now empty, you can all go over here and plague this side. Oh, nice. I may actually end up taking that. There are no other troops around. There we go. Whether to hold on to it remains a different matter. And, uh, those attacks are hill. Actually, I shouldn't have commented on that uh, capital gains tax. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the capital gains tax is for the UK. So it could be, could be higher. I do know that the. Um, the UK has an infinite high, re, infinite rehypothecation ability in the city of London. Meaning that you can collateralise on a loan, then kind of, you can sort of get collateral for, uh, for a loan, then use that loan as collateral, then use that loan as collateral, then use that loan as collateral. Uh, for the creation of infinite debt. And that's that's unique, as far as we can tell, to the, uh, to the uh, city of London. Which is, which is why it's about three, <laughs> the, uh, the debts held in the, uh, by the City of London, uh, companies in the City of London, contribute, contribute to about 300% of GDP. It's a, it, well, it's the equivalent of 300% of GDP. That's a fun fact, uh, while I take out the film. I just realised, where are my supply weapons? No, I don't need supply weapons. Not too easy. Might have been more of a challenge if I hadn't used the bot the uh, thingy card before then. But as a yeah, the uh, invasion technique, I thought it was uh, it was fairly solid because it never gave them a chance to uh, know what was well, I didn't know what was going on, so what chance did they have? And now we're moving for the coup de croix, and there wasn't any need for a countdown timer. I might, I didn't see the nice to finish uh, drinking the tea. Mm. Lovely. Um, I did tell you about the income tax and something else. I think I gave you a brief history of. Well, maybe I didn't. Anyway. Um, I rather enjoyed that. I think it was rather rather perky for uh, for the game, in which uh, uh, two hundred and eleven people died, or more if you go by units lost. Well, I think it's one of the speedier games I've had today. Only twenty eight minutes. Now this video is probably more like thirty five, but I did do a lot of rambling both before and after the game. <laughs> so, research 10 minutes in, got to the industrial age, they didn't, and the most territory, that doesn't make sense. Oh, that's a lot of mouse clicks and 40, 40 clicks per minute. Hmm, I'm getting faster, I think, possibly, I don't know. Uh, there's the military, territory, resource, technology. Much. All, all very good. So what does this actually do for me? Sweet FA is what it does for me. I get the spy show for filthy. Ooh, big whoop. I get a free I get a free heavy ship with every uh oh, I get 156 tribute, that's not bad. I got one I get a free heavy ship with every uh docker build. And the map starts off explored. That's what it gets you. So what happened in the rest of the world? Hmm second time in about a minute. Sweet FA. 
As an expression, I don't even use it. I don't know where it came from. Um, oh, the French invaded the Mongols at Lower Canada. Hmm. Might be an idea to take on the French. I'd, I'd certainly unify Europe. On the other hand, it would be uh, it would be quite amusing to just sort of take the take the Lakota entirely by surprise. Hmm, I don't know. I do have quite a few uh, sabotages. I have lost a lot of tribute from the uh, Spanish, which is nice of them. Restock that for my uh, science Eureka. Anyway, that's for that's another episode. I may just continue straight. I was going to continue straight on. I think I might go for the French, just to uh, just so I don't have to worry about Europe anymore with all of these units stationed there. If I was the Mongols, I'd be looking a little bit uh, a little bit worried there. All units stationed around the French Empire. I've got all the troops I need to keep off the Lakota. Yeah, all good. So I will see you next video when I believe I'll be taking on the French. See you next time.